Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. It's Monday, the 8th of July, 2024. How are you doing this morning? How was your weekend? I hope you're having a fantastic week already. On today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which the Nigerian creative space and the opportunities for youth. So we'll be discussing that much later in the show. Another is Breaking Barriers, Challenging the Norms, the first woman to ride from East Africa to West Africa. We'll be having a conversation with her as well. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day just to set the tone. Success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. And that is by Winston Churchill. He was a former prime minister of the United Kingdom. And this morning the court says success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Now, as we all know, most times people fail. But when you fail, what do you do? You pick yourself back up, right? You have to understand that it's okay to fail. Even if you fail, it doesn't mean that's the end of your life. It doesn't mean that's the end of the road for that particular thing you're working on or the, part or the particular project you're wor working on. It is important to note that when you fail, it's just for you to go back to the drawing board and say, what did I get wrong? How can I improve this? How can I make it better? How can I develop it to what I want it to be, right? So having that enthusiasm is the key to say, oh yes, I have failed, but I know that I am still going to get it right. I don't know when, but it will happen. So always having that enthusiasm that that next time might just be the, the light bulb moment, might just be that moment where you get it right. So most times people just you know just decide that you know i'm not going to try again because i have failed but that is where you get it wrong and you only fail when you decide not to try again but when you decide to try again when you try to you know put certain actions change several things well, you might just get it right. And that is what success is all about. If you look at, you know, most of the moguls, the people who are um, key players in all of our industries today, when you look at tech, when you look at music, when you look at fashion, when you look at art, most of those people are people who have failed before. They're people who have written books and they never made it to the shelves. But guess what? Today, they're best-selling authors and that can be you. So it's just you picking up yourself from wherever you are, even if you failed before, if you failed a hundred times, try a hundred and one times because that one extra push might just be where your success lies and so do not give up this morning i mean it's a monday morning and we're just trying to champion your week change that mindset for you have a paradigm shift so you can become that success that you've always wanted to be so make sure this week as you go about your week know that it is okay to fail but do not beat yourself up do not stay there make sure that you stand up one more time and work on that goal on that dream on that thing that you're pursuing and guess what you will be successful at it all right that's it for our quote of the day we'll move over to some top trending stories this morning this first one is quite a sad one um, it says bandits kidnapped two journalist family members in kaduna suspected bandits kidnapped two journalists abdul gafar Allah belewe and Abdul Rahim Audu, along with their families in Dahonu community, Chicken local government area of Kaduna State. Allah Belewe, chairman of the Correspondence Chapel of NUJ Kaduna State Council, was abducted with his wife and two children, while Audu and his wife were also kidnapped, leaving behind their sick daughter. The bandits attacked the community around 10.30 p.m. shooting sporadically. They initially took Alabelewe's wife, three children, and a guest 
but later released the girl and one of the children. The police have deployed operatives into the bush to secure the victim's release, confirmed by the public relations officer, Mansar Hassan. This is quite a sad one. Um, I know that people are just trying to live their lives out here. First, there are so many things that are happening in the country that we cannot understand, or people are just trying to get by, but then getting kidnapped. And you're looking at a family, two families, in fact, and they're journalists. These are people who are still trying their best to be able to um, spread awareness of social economic issues in the country, but then they get kidnapped by these bandits. We don't know what you know they want yet, because most times when people, um, when people are abducted, they are probably looking at ransom or they're probably looking for money or there might just be another reason why they've been abducted but it's quite unfortunate um, that people are still getting abducted we always talk about this um, stories oftentimes and you know you would expect that it would kind of be better at some point i know that or rather i want to believe that the government is trying their best to ensure that we are safe in nigeria but what can we do? And it's just, it's just quite unfortunate. Um, I hope that they come out safely. I hope that they are okay, they are not being hurt, because when you're looking at a whole family, husband, wife, kids, and you're just wondering what's going on in their minds. Now, on the other hand, we really, really want to call on the government to ensure that you know, the lives and properties of Nigerians are safe, because that is your primary responsibility. Um, what are we doing with the intel that we have? All of these bandits, most times when ransoms are being sent, you probably have an account number or you have an address or you have a phone number that they've used to make those phone calls. So how are we tracking them down? What are we doing with our security apparatus in Nigeria? This doesn't look good um, into the outer world. You know, other countries, other people saying that Nigeria is not safe. If Nigeria is one of the uh, most unsafe countries in the world, how do you expect our economy to flourish even more? How do you expect people to come here? How do you expect, you know, tournaments to be held? How do you expect education to thrive there are so many things that are you know bound into insecurity when insecurity thrives in a nation of course every other thing is going to fall apart but when the lives and properties of these people are secured first the citizens then we can start to look at other things for instance farmers cannot go to their farms because of the fear of these same bandits right some people cannot travel to their home because they're afraid that they're going to get kidnapped on the way. So insecurity is a major thing in Nigeria. People cannot even come here to study because they feel like Nigeria is not safe. People cannot even come here to enjoy, you know, our tourism, the beautiful lands, the beautiful places that we have in Nigeria, just because it's unsafe. So it is important that we're looking at, yeah, we're really trying to tackle insecurity in the nation. That way we can even have a better nation for everyone and for other people to actually come into. Um, now for these families, like I said, I really hope that they are safe and I, can't, I hope that the, the government is trying to do their best to make sure that they are being brought, brought out safely. I know they've said they've tried to go into the bushes and try to look for them, but that's just one thing. Um, make sure that you're tracking them down. Make sure that when you even finally find them, it is important that they face the justice system. Because one thing about insecurity or banditry or terrorism is when one person does it and they're not being, um, they're not facing any sort of disciplinary action, guess what? You're telling others that it's okay to do it as well. And I feel like that's what has made this um, thrive so much. In fact, Kidnapping seems like a budding business in Nigeria. It feels like if you cannot put food on your table legally, the next thing to do is to kidnap someone and just ask for ransom, which is super wrong. Please, if you have ever thought about that, make sure that you're taking that idea out of your head. It is not okay. You can still make ends meet. Fine, you might not be able to um, be the wealthiest person in one minute or in one day, but you can still try your best. Put it, make ends meet, put food on the table for your family, and then you can just start to grow your own wealth. It is okay to grow your own wealth and it is possible in as much as it seems like our economy is not the best at the moment but you have still people who are still making it all you have to do is think of an idea something that 
can just um, cater to the needs of people. And if they need that, it's just a case of demand and supply. So we hope that the government is doing something, especially about the economy, because sometimes this is what drives people into illegal things that they delve their hands into. So it is important that we have a good system for the citizens. And that way, they are not trying to think of other things to do that are not right. Because you know how they say, um, an idle man is the devil's workshop. So if you think, or rather an idle mind is a devil's workshop. So if your mind is idle, you're not putting it to good use, you might start to think of other things that are just not the right thing to do at the moment or the right thing to do at all so we hope that the government is doing something about our economy we hope that the government is trying to tackle insecurity to ensure that the lives and properties of nigerians are safe all right another top trending story says court orders buhari's minister to account for 725 billion naira payments to poor nigerians the federal high court in Lagos ordered former minister Sadia Umar Farouk to account for 729 billion naira distributed to 24.3 million poor Nigerians over six months, providing details of the beneficiaries, states covered, and payment amounts. Justice Dende Isaac Dupol ruling following a suit by Serap emphasized the minister's obligation under the Freedom of Information Act to disclose spending details, selection processes, and payment mechanisms dismissing the minister's preliminary objections. Sarab Deputy Director Kola Wale Oluwadari praised this, um, pro promoting transparency, accountability, and acts President Boletinibu to, con to actually comply um, and make sure that humanitarian affairs and government bodies um, comply to this. Sarap's letter to the president, Tinubu stressed that immediate compliance with the judgment will restore public trust in the judiciary, demonstrating the administration's commitment to the rule of law, transparency, and accountability. Um, this is something we've always talked about. We expect that the government should be accountable, should have some form of transparency. We need to know what you're doing with public funds. These are taxpayers' monies, and it is important that these people know what you're doing with their monies. Now, you're hearing of 729 billion an hour. That's a lot of money. What did that money go to? What was that money being used for? And I know that the humanitarian affairs has had a lot of scandal in recent times. In fact, you know of, um, you know, um, Better Edu, who also had a scandal about some form of some huge amount of money as well. And it seems like the humanitarian affairs is just that um, ministry whereby you cannot really ascertain if people got this money. Now, this money was slated, was being put out to say, you know what, we're going to help poor Nigerians. We're going to help people who cannot afford, um, you know, basic things in their lives. But guess what? There are other people who are there who are just siphoning this money. We don't know. Because there's really no data to show that these poor Nigerians actually got this money. Or if there was some form of, um, you know, vocational studies, if there was some form of um, help rendered or aid rendered to these people, you cannot, you cannot really ascertain that they got it. So most times, it's kind of like a loophole for people to actually embezzle money. Um, I don't know what the President Bola Tinibu is doing. I know that when um, the scandal came or the um, allegedly um, rumor that came about Better Edu because it hasn't been properly investigated now. And that is even a problem because we hear of these things, we make noise about it for a few days or a few weeks, and before you know it, it's being swept under the carpet. Now, whatever rocked Better Edu's um, ministry at that point, the humanitarian ministry, we only talked about it for a while. And before you know it now, no one is talking about it again. And I know that the president actually suspended her, but there's been no proper inv investigation into that. We don't know what's going on. We don't know how these monies are going to be recovered. We don't know if people who really, really need these monies are going to get them. So I feel like with the ministries, it is important that there is some form of accountability. If there is no accountability, then we're just joking. Then we're just saying that it's okay for people to go into public offices and get taxpayers' monies and nothing is going to happen to them. Or even if anything happens, it's probably just going to be a slap on the wrist and say, oh, don't do that again. Or make sure, you, make sure that you don't get caught when you do it again. 
it is important that we understand that Nigeria is for everyone. And how do you feel when you know that there are people who are suffering? Meanwhile, you're taking the monies that are meant to cater for these same sets of people. So, for the government officials, please and please and please, we need some level of accountability. We need some form of transparency. And I think it's time for the Nigerian people to actually rise up and start to demand these things. It is important that you know the people who are even in these offices because that's the only way you can start to demand. If you do not know the person who is in your local government or who is the senator um, representing your constituency or the House of Rep member, if you do not know your governor, if you not if you do not know your counselors, if you don't know this, if you don't know these people, how can you start to write to them? How can you start to you know call their offices out when they do not do the things that are right? So please, Nigerians. Now is the time to rise up. Now is the time to demand for good governance. Now is the time to demand for accountability and transparency for the people who are taking these positions. Taking this position doesn't mean, you know, you're just going to go there to enrich your pockets. Taking these positions means that you have a passion for ruling, a passion for good governance. A passion for ensuring that you have the right policies, you're putting policies in place that would help Nigerians, that would elevate the sufferings of the people. Not just going there, forgetting all that we are going through and just enrich, enriching your pockets. No, uh, that is wrong. That is not right. We do not expect that from you. We expect, uh, we expect accountability and transparency. And so please, we want that from you. And Nigerians, start speaking up. Start to demand what is rightfully yours. And hopefully we'll get to a point whereby corruption is just not going to be the norm anymore. We'll get to the point where we know that, oh, our leaders are true to themselves. Our leaders are accountable. Our leaders are transparent. Our leaders, they have the heart for the people. They have the heart for development, infrastructure, good education, good health care, welfare for Nigerians. We hope that one day we will get there and this nation will flourish even more. All right, to so our final top trending story, this one says public institutions, not personal enterprises, Tinubu wants. President Bola Tinubu emphasized that public institutions are not personal enterprises and that public servants are accountable to Nigerian citizens. Speaking at the Nigerian Excellence Awards in Public Service, he stressed the importance of public trust, accountability, and creating an environment where merit is rewarded, ensuring that public servants feel valued and motivated. Tinubu reiterated his administration's commitment to fostering a culture of recognition and reward within the public service. Vice President Kashim Shetima, representing Tinubu, highlighted the need for continuous reminders that public institutions serve the people and not individual interests. He acknowledged the existence of exploited loopholes despite measures to prevent irregularities, urging public servants to live up to their responsibilities. Shetima underlined the significance of the NIAPS, stating that it is crucial to inspire the nation's workforce and create a ripple effect of positive change throughout society. The NIAPS event, a private sector initiative supported by the government, recognized 44 individuals, including notable figures such as General Abdusalami Abubakar and Aliku Dangote. The awards aim to inspire excellence, set benchmarks, and foster a culture of recognition and reward in Nigeria's public service. The event celebrated the unsung heroes who keep the wheels of government and society turning, highlighting their commitment to building a better future for all citizens. SGF Judge Akume um, explained that NIAPS recognizes and rewards innovation, purposeful leadership, and hard work by exceptional individuals and organizations in the public service. He assured that efforts will be made to maintain the initiatives as a regular feature to motivate and encourage excellence. Akume emphasized that the selection of honorees was based on empirical facts and figures, urging recipients to continue their efforts towards making Nigeria a more prosperous and progressive country. Well, that's what we all want. Um, just like I've said, 
going into public office is for the people it's not for yourself it's not to, um it's not for your own personal interest it's for the interest of everyone it's a communal thing it is important that um as people go into public offices they are trying their best to do what is needful for the citizens of the country and of course we always um, want a progressive nation we want a nation that is moving forward that is going to that place of um, you know sustainable development we don't want a, a country that is just dwindling a country that would say oh it was better before it was better in the 1980s it was better in the 1970s how about now we should say that we're moving somewhere we should say that we're getting better and it's important that the leaders the people who are leading this country who are turning the wheels are doing that you can't be turning the wheels backwards we expect you to turn those wheels forward and so if you're going into public office that is just it's just a basic minimum that we were even asking for as nigerians we're not asking for too much we just want a system that works and if you give us that because nigerians are the people that are so happy even with all of the 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 discomfort all of the challenges that they're facing we still find a way to smile through it we're so resilient that we try our best to do what is right but sometimes the system just doesn't work and we want a system that works we want people to go into these public offices and not just go there and say oh i commissioned a borehole what is that we expect you to say, I'm doing, I'm doing what is needful for Nigerians. I'm building roads. I'm you know, having railway um, systems. I'm having good, I'm, I have good intentions for infrastructure, for development, for healthcare, for education, for tourism, for agriculture. There are so many sectors that are untapped. There are so many things that we can do in our nation because guess what? We have the human capital. We are just not utilizing it properly. So we need to start to go into public offices with that mindset of creating policies that can work for our nation, that can work for the people. How are we trying to remove, um, you know, move up the poverty line? How are we trying to remove people from this whole place where they're in, 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 in abject poverty? How can we move them to a place where we're saying that, yes, all Nigerians were all rich, were all wealthy people because we have a wealthy land. We have a land that is filled with good resources, that we have been blessed. We've been blessed. We don't have tsunamis. We don't have earthquakes. We don't have natural disasters. We have so much in this country that we've been blessed with. But then we just have a system that doesn't work and we expect that the government right now we start to look at that how are we even encouraging our youths to go into 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 politics to go into governance and it's important that like i said don't go there and say you're creating a borehole or you're doing something little and you're giving yourself a pat on the back that i've done something so amazing no we need you to go there because it's based on merit. We're only going to commend you when you're doing something right. If you're not doing anything right, don't expect us to give you an applause. We're also going to call you out. And I think it's important, just like when I said we need to start a demand for good governance, I think it's important that we start to call out the people who are not even doing the right thing for Nigerians. If you go there and you steal, we will call you out. If you go there and you embezzle money, we will call you out. If you go there and you are corrupt, we will call you out. If you go there and you're doing what is right for Nigerians, we will commend you, we will give you an applause, and we'll tell you to keep going. We will encourage you. And the only way we can start to build trust with the Nigerian people and the government officials is when we see you do all of these things. When we see that you are coming out of corruption, you're eradicating corruption. When we see that you're putting policies in place for the people. When we see that you're prioritizing our welfare. That's the only time we can commend you. And we hope that we will get there. We hope that you will go there. We pray that you have the heart of the people and you always think of better ways to ensure that we have a good country for everyone and not just for some people. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us. <laughs>